Hi guys, I'm Kristen, this is Taylor, and this is Kristen is Fully Booked. Today we're going to give you 22 book recommendations for books you should read in 2022. So for this recommendation video, Taylor and I came up with 11 prompts, and some of these were actually submitted by people who are on my Instagram, so thank you if you submitted a prompt. And we came up with a book recommendation, each of us, for these 11 prompts to give you 22 book recommendations of books we think you should read this year. Now. For reference, Taylor and I do have pretty similar reading tastes. We love a lot of the same books. We rarely like drastically disagree. So if you are familiar with sort of my reading tastes and preferences, very similar, but we haven't always read the same books. So we'll jump right into it. Our first prompt here is a book that will make you laugh out loud. So for this one, I'm gonna go with A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms by George R. R. Martin. This is a collection of prequel novellas for the A Song of Ice and Fire series, following a hedge knight and a page, Dunk and Egg, as they travel Westeros and get into a bunch of hilarious hijinks. There is no need to have read the Song of Ice and Fire series because these are set 100 years before the main series. There are no characters in common who are referenced. You can just jump in whether or not you have read that series. There is a good mix of fun, hijinks, and hilariousness with some nice, bittersweet, kind of sad moments as well. My recommendation for this prompt is Guards Guards by Terry Pratchett, which is actually, we're starting off on a bit of a controversial note because Kristen did not enjoy this one as much as I hoped she would. It's about a bunch of misfits in the City Watch who have to try to save the city from a dragon. There's a secret society, there's a six foot five dwarf, and there's an amazing woman who just really loves dragons. It's very low on plot, but really big on humor. So if you're looking for something that maybe won't suck you in with world ending stakes, but if you just want to laugh, this is a really good book for that. For the second prompt here, we're gonna go with a book that has mature main characters saving the world. And I'm gonna go with The Bone Maker by Sarah Beth Durst. This is a group of heroes who saved the world 25 years ago, and we are catching up with them 25 years after the fact. While this book didn't completely work for me, I do have a review you can check out for that. I do think it was a really great example of mature main characters and seeing how the past, how them being heroes in the past has affected their life. So I thought that that exploration was really well done. And if you are looking for main characters who are older, this is definitely a great book for that, as well as a lot of other Sarah Beth Durst books. My pick for this prompt is Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames. The first book is about this old mercenary band that gets back together. They're middle-aged and like their backs hurt and they've gotten fat, but they really have to get together in order to save the daughter of one of the members of the band. It's really cute. It's charming. It's funny. It actually has a lot more heart than you might expect from a book about middle-aged dudes going on an adventure together. For the third prompt, we're gonna go with a fantasy with a page-turning mystery element. I actually really struggled with this one, but I'm gonna go with A House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. I do think that the mystery here was really well written. It just, the conclusion, the way that we learn the result was maybe a little bit, what's that called? Where like the villain just like, this was all I was, yes, it was a very villainous monologue, kind of an explanation to the mystery. But up until that point, you definitely wanted to keep turning the page to find out what had happened with this murder in the past and with the murders that are going on right now. I still haven't read that one. But she's gonna. Maybe. Someday. Maybe. <laughs> it's on hold at the library. My pick for this one is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, or as it was in the US, The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. This is a really crazy book. It's like a mixture of Agatha Christie, 1920s flapper vibes, and some really weird speculative fiction stuff going on. It's definitely not a classical fantasy. I think that this is one of those books that the less you know about it going into it, the better. But basically the plot is that the main character has to try to figure out who kills Evelyn Hardcastle. And I won't say any more than that. You won't know everything when you're reading in the beginning. It will be confusing. Just, just go with it. Okay, for the fourth prompt here, we have a good fantasy book to read on the beach. 
Now for me, I interpret a good beach read as something with low stakes that keeps you really interested so that you could, like in theory, just sit on the beach all day and read that one book. Now I normally would say a romance book, but I'm going to go with a fantasy romance with Radiance by Grace Draven. This story features a political arranged marriage between two people of different species who each find the other species like completely terrifying or horrendous. They have a very cute meet cute where they don't know each other and they're very honest about how unattractive they find each other, but then they decide to go into the marriage just with like friendship, honesty, and mutual respect, and it is the healthiest most wonderful relationship I have ever read in a book. Oh, yeah, so cute. The plot and the stakes here are very low, but you'll be so invested in the relationship between Britian and Ildiko, you'll just keep trying the page to find out what happens. So I interpret a beach read as something that you want to keep reading, like that's really fun, you can duck in and out, but it keeps your attention. My pick for this is maybe a little bit controversial again because it's set in winter, but Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. I was actually the one who recommended it to Kristen and I was so excited that she liked it as well. <laughs> Little Thieves is great because it is just so much fun. Like, I think I was grinning the whole time that I read this book. The main character, Vanya, is just an absolute delight. And by delight, I mean she's kind of the worst person ever. But you, you feel for her, you understand why she's that way. And also she's just really fun. I agree with Kristen's assessment that like the second half isn't quite as fun as the first half, but it still kept me reading. And I think I read it in like two days max, loved it. Okay, for the fifth prompt here, we're going with a fantasy book that is about friendship more so than romance. I am going to go with A Deadly Education. Now this relationship changes in the second book, so I'm not saying the whole Scholomance series at large, but in the first book, A Deadly Education, this is focusing just on the relationship, the friendship between Elle and Orion, who are two people of very different backgrounds and very different personalities, but they are both misunderstood and kind of misfits within their school and they, over the course of this book, are sort of forced into a friendship with each other. Or like, let's say one just kind of attaches themselves to the other and a friendship ensues kind of against one of their will. <laughs> but in a cute way! It's really cute because they are both just so misunderstood by everyone else and they really come to like champion each other, so it's a really really cute friendship. I also think that this prompt is quite hard and I don't know if that's because I like fantasy with romance elements in it or if it's because so many books have romance elements. I'm going to go with a fantasy classic here, The Lies of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch where the driving force behind the book is actually the friendship between the main character Locke and his best friend Jean, who have a complicated childhood together and have grown up to be close friends. That friendship is definitely tested in this book as well as in the sequels, but through it all they are steadfast and mostly true to each other. Okay, for prompt number six, we're gonna just go for it here and go for that fantasy with a great romantic subplot. So not a main plot, we're not gonna pick fantasy romance here, but a fantasy novel that happens to have a great romantic subplot. Now I'm gonna go with the cult classic Cushiel's Dart by Jacqueline Carey. This is a book featuring an unlikely hero, our courtesan spy, Phaedra. The romance in this story starts late in the book, at over a third of the way in at least, and it very, very slowly and quietly develops in the background, but to the extent that you will be chomping at the bit to learn more, to get more scenes. You are going to be reading into every single look and touch and thing that is said between these characters and reimagining it playing out in a broader spectrum because you want more of this romance. And this is definitely a relationship that you're going to get a lot more payoff if you continue on into the series and read the next two books and the trilogy. My pick for this prompt is The Tethered Mage and sequels by Melissa Caruso. It is action-packed, political intrigue, great magic. I love this trilogy so much. One of the things I absolutely love about it is that the trilogy features the greatest love triangle of all time, where you actually want her to end up with both of the characters somehow because the two love interests complement different aspects of the main character Amalia's personality. 
I don't agree with all of the choices that were made in this trilogy. There were some pretty dark things that happened that made me extremely upset. But honestly, both of the love interests are just fulfilling and loving and supportive and everything that you could want. And just somehow you want both of them. Prompt number seven is a book that you need to read when you are feeling stuck, low, or just blah in life. I'm going to go with A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. This is a novella about having a midlife crisis and trying to find purpose in your life. This novella is set in a hopeful and optimistic future where humanity realizes the mistakes that they were making and successfully implemented changes regarding sustainability, the environment, and pollution. And in this novella we follow a non-binary monk and robot who meet to discuss life, purpose, and connection. It is My pick for this prompt is The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison. This is a quiet book. It follows Maya, who's the half-goblin son of the elf emperor. He's brought to the throne quite suddenly after the deaths of his father and older brothers, but the main driving force of this plot is the fact that Maya is lonely and really just wants some friendship. And of course this is complicated by the fact that he is now the emperor. I absolutely adore this book. If you're looking for just a heartfelt story, this one comes highly recommended. Prompt number eight is a fairy tale retelling. I, of course, am going to go with Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Morillier. This is a retelling of the Seven Swan Brothers story, where our main character is a young girl with six older brothers who are all turned into swans by an evil sorceress. I obviously love many things about this book, but from a fairy tale retelling aspect, I really like and appreciate that the tone of the book takes that suffering and kind of painful, heart wrenching elements of fairy tales and it keeps that tone in this retelling. We focus on a lot of the sacrifices that our main character, Sorsha, has to do in order to meet all of the requirements to break the curse and how her life is significantly impacted in a lot of ways through this curse and the breaking of the curse over the time. My pick for this one is more of a mythology retelling than a folklore retelling, but I'm going to go with Circe by Madeline Miller. This book follows Circe, the famous witch from Homer's Odyssey, and tells her side of the story. I really loved this one because I have a training in classics, and so I was actually really impressed with how this book weaves together so many different myths and lesser known myths than just the Odyssey as well in order to create a really beautiful and compelling and quite sad as well narrative of Circe finding herself, finding love maybe, but also acceptance in herself as well. Prop number nine is a non-European inspired fantasy and I'm gonna go with Under Heaven by Guy Gabriel Kay, which is a fantastical retelling of the Tang Dynasty set in China. This literary historical fantasy is the epitome of Kay's love writing for culture and civilization. If you want a true dive into a time period, a culture, the imperfections and the beauties of that time period and culture, look no further than Under Heaven by Guy Gabriel Kay. My pick for this prompt is City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. I absolutely love this fantasy. It is like a breath of fresh air in all of the medieval inspired European fantasy. But this just feels different. It feels new and exciting. The plot follows Nari, who's a con artist in Cairo who gets whisked away to the fantasy land of Devabad. It is inspired by Islamic folklore and it just feels so lush in the descriptions. It also has really interesting political intrigue and conflicts between different tribes in Devabad. There's also a really great romance, but I won't tell you with who because different people have different opinions on this romance. Taylor recommended our book club, our local fantasy book club, to read City of Brass. And then a, like half of the book club actually continued to meet separately outside of our regularly scheduled books in order to continue the series together. Mm -hmm. I felt so validated by everyone's yeah. love for this book. <laughs> now, prompt number 10 is a book to give you a good cathartic cry. 
I'm going to go with The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornachek here. This is a fantasy retelling of the story of Ragnarok, but told from the typically like bad guy perspective of Aang the Witch and Boda and her three children. This story focuses on Aang Boda as a mother, her pain and challenges being a mother of three kids who are different. She also has an extremely complicated relationship with her husband, Loki. While really quiet over the course of the story, told a little bit more from a distant fairy tale sort of a, a style or perspective, it did have a very dramatic, very heartbreaking ending that had me sobbing over the course of the last few chapters. My pick for this prompt is The Light Between Worlds by Laura E. Weymouth. The premise of this book is basically what happens when the Pevensies come back from Narnia after The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. They're of course not the same as the Pevensies, but the characters are very clearly inspired by them. What follows is a beautiful story of loss, of heartache, it focuses on the two sisters, Evelyn, who's the sort of Lucy character, who having grown up in the sort of Narnia analog, has found herself now basically a girl again. And she struggles with her identity. She struggles with missing this home that she had built for herself and doesn't really know how to fit in in the world back home. The second half of the book focuses more on Philippa, who is the Susan analog, and if you read The Chronicles of Narnia and you wanted justice for Susan, then let me tell you, this is the book for you. Philippa is a fantastically complex and strong character, and her heartache is just as cathartic to cry over as Evelyn's, even if she shows it in different ways. This was Weymouth's debut, and it is just really gorgeous prose, and I sobbed pretty much the whole way through reading this. It was so cathartic and I loved it. Okay, for our last prompt, number 11, we are gonna go with a book that Taylor and I both think that more people should know about and that we wish more people were reading. I'm gonna go with Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. I don't talk about this book enough on this channel. I do think it is popular in certain circles, but it has a shockingly low amount of ratings on Goodreads. This is a story following two characters set in a reimagined post Russian Revolution sort of a setting but with dragons and we're following two characters who have both been orphaned during the revolution and we really really look at the pros and cons and ask ourselves is this government that much better than what came before it. There is a really complicated relationship between our two main characters Annie and Lee but I won't get into that here I'll just say that I think this is a young adult book that is going to work for all ages. It is a type of book that you pick up different things depending on what you know, where you are in your life. But it is a really interesting exploration of this complicated dynamic between Annie and Lee and the realities of new government and revolutions. And more people should read it, Taylor. <laughs> it's on my list. One final thing is that there are two books out currently and the third and final book in this trilogy is coming out this spring. So if you haven't picked it up yet, this is a great time to do so. You have more than enough time to read the first two books and pick up the third book when it comes out later this spring. My pick for this prompt is The Counselor by E.J. Beaton, which I know Kristen has also talked about because we read it for our book club. I loved this book. This is the sort of book that I wish I could have written. It is just beautiful prose, great political intrigue, and a really fantastic main character. Lysand is a scholar, but she's not just a scholar in name. She like lives and breathes the scholarship that she knows so innately. The premise of the book is that Lysand is appointed as the counselor to the kingdom when her friend, the queen, is poisoned suddenly. She has to decide which of the four city-state rulers will take over the queen's place, but she also thinks that one of them is responsible for poisoning the queen in the first place. This book also features a really great, I don't know if I can call it a romance? What's before romance? Seduction? Oh, there we go. This book also features the amazing Luca Fontaine, whose butt looks great in a pair of tight riding pants. And he is just so much fun. He has a pet snake. 
Everybody should read The Counselor, especially if you like political intrigue and if you like hot guys in tight riding pants. <laughs> I will link in the description box below all of the videos where I have briefly mentioned The Counselor. It's one of those books that every time I mention it on the channel, I end up talking for 15 minutes and have to cut all of it because my videos can't be that long. Okay, those are all of our 22 recommendations that you should read in 2022. Are there any books here that you've read or that you want to read? Let us know down below. If you just want to let us know that you are still here, put the snake emoji for our <laughs> edgelord Luca Fontaine. <laughs> edgelord. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I just recently passed 400 subscribers and I'm really hoping to get to 500 sometime soon, in which case I will do a Q&A or an ask me anything. So if you have questions that you'd like me to answer for that video, you can put them down below and I will get to them then. I post videos on every Monday and Thursday and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you Taylor for coming in today. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Once more for good No, adventure. I think I, okay, once more for good okay. Today we're going to give you 22 book recommendations for 2020 reading. No! <laughs> <laughs> On the last second I was like, oh, I should do one where I say to read in. You can watch her review of this. And... <laughs>